And we're back here on the Stogie Geeks show. As always, you can visit our website <laughs> where you can see videos of Stogie Santa. Maybe you don't want to see that video, but... <laughs> Norton Cigars. And uh, read all the latest reviews, watch all the latest shows, and listen to the latest uh, podcast versions. Good little smoke. So uh, that's awesome. www.stogiegeeks.com. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. cigar He's is fantastic. Not, I mean, hello. It's, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, the finish on this cigar. This is the uh, Ramon Ye Ramon. <clears throat> Familia. Familia. Thank you, Tim. Hey, la Familia. La Familia. Hey, big shout out to Big Pete. He's in the chat. Hey, big right. Pete. Peter. What's up, Big Pete? Also to Dustin, a.k.a. Maduro Man from BOTL. All right, Peter. Um, so this segment I, I had is uh, kind of talking about our little segment we were doing in between segments. <laughs> was the uh, Smoke Cuban Cigars, yes. I think is the, the point. Now... Recently, as we're talking, rant? yeah, it is a rant, but okay. it, but there's going to be some useful information in there too, and I'm going to call upon all the Stogie Geeks crew for that. It is it is tough to get uh, Cuban cigars mm -hmm. uh, illegal. We do it anyway. I mean, we're rebels, whatever. Or rebels the other personas of ourselves and alter egos do it, and then give it. To I have us. no idea what you're talking I don't about. Know what you're talking about either. Mm, right. So, I, and as I read and listen uh, about cigars in several different places on the internet, I notice some trends that are concerning to me. Um, there are some people that do not review or discuss Cuban cigars, even though they used to in the past. I think some, and I won't name names, have maybe been too heavily influenced by others in the industry, their sponsors, their um, you know third-party influences, as it were. Maybe their own concerns about uh, getting caught or whatnot, as we all light up Cuban cigars. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> I see a lot of media outlets uh, reviewing or dealing with Maybe only Cuban cigars, maybe only non-Cuban cigars, maybe boutique cigars, maybe cigars that are only limited or hard to find, such as 50% flat tire. Um, I, you know, I've seen some who like to focus on machine-made cigars. All right, there was that one guy on YouTube that was pretty funny, did reviews on mm -hmm. some machine-made cigars, which is entertaining. Um, and a lot of the other things. So, I mean, to address the, the Cuban thing, uh, we've talked about that before on the show. And uh, we'll kind of we'll come back to it, and I want to kind of put forth our mantra, make sure everyone mm -hmm. here in the crew agrees with me. But another thing I also see is a lot of people say or publish stuff, and no one like calls them out on it. Mm -hmm. And it seems like there's kind of like this inertia that if one person in so-called you know what the cigar industry calls new media, which really now is media, it will say something, maybe produce a good review on a cigar, and then everyone just kind of falls in like dominoes, like oh yeah, it, it is good, it is good, it is good. Or say certain things about a cigar, and no one get no one calling them out. Mm. No one's challenging, and I'm not saying that you know you want to be a troll and call people wrong all the time. No, but there needs to be some kind of balance to it all, and I don't see a lot of the balance happening. Um, you know, like on the Paul Com show, we had a lot of panel discussions. We purposely pulled people together who had different viewpoints on a subject and got everyone's viewpoints. And to me, that's the most valuable thing to the listeners, to hear all the different viewpoints. And there are some shows and some blogs and media outlets, even traditional media and all the traditional magazines and whatnot, that are presenting a very tunnel vision view of the industry, of cigars, of manufacturers, of different countries that make cigars and there's not uh, there's not a lot of balance so hopefully we can bring some of that although to the, the table although the biggest one cigar fishing auto does remain fairly balanced they do do everything mm. which is kind of I mean, they're not the greatest publication, but they, they do. Right. Yeah, but they're the only major publication that does it right at this it, point in that in and of itself is that's almost like speaking, tunnel vision, I'm making right. your point yeah, exactly thank you um, that's why we keep you around so, yeah, I know it huh um, huh <laughs> so I just want to say that we want to get one thing straight here on the Stogie Geek show that we deal with one kind of cigar and one kind of cigar only. And that is the kind that you smoke. <laughs> I just want to say, I don't care what it is, <laughs> well done, where sir. it comes from, mm -hmm. how much it costs, the origin, make, country, size, wrapper, who wrote it, who sold it, who smoked it, who's going to smoke it, where it sold or what the phase of the moon is when you smoke it. We'll review it if it's a cigar and you can smoke it. Um, now, I'm not saying that we want to go seek out white owls or anything. Right, right. Yeah, I know what you mean. You know what I mean? Um, we want to smoke it. We want to tell you about it without any preconceived notions. We're going to give you the honest opinion. Whether you like it or not, we're going to give you the skinny. And that's, and that's our, uh, uh, our perspective on things. Um, 
we do that without prejudice, without judgment, and you know we tell you basically with our rating system whether it's a good cigar or not. Now keep in mind that's still our opinion. You may have a completely different opinion, and that's okay. And we welcome that. Please go make some comments on our blog or Facebook good or whatever. Or bad, makes good no or bad, you mm-hmm. know, we want the feedback. So having said all that, I wanted to talk a little bit about the five Cuban cigars of boxes you need to have in your humidor. I've been right. thinking Ooh. about this recently. It, it, so it's our, almost like awesome. osmosis, yeah. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. All the same level. Oh, cool. yeah. Now I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So uh, my <laughs> number one was a Partiga Series D number four. It's a great Robusto size. It has to be. It's a great flavor profile early in the day, after dinner. That flavor profile is so versatile. It always delivers. They tend to burn really well. I don't know. I've, I've, I haven't had too many burn and uh, construction issues Mm. With this particular blend. Never. Um, I can say actually never, never once. The price isn't bad. I mean, I mm. got a box once, super, super cheap, like 150 bucks. Um, I think now you're going to pay well above 200 uh, probably for your box. Oh, maybe less. No. Maybe 185. 180. 180, 180, yeah. 180 to 200 maybe. 200 being the top end. And Whatever, 180 depend. being, yeah. Depending um, on the So side. that was number one on my list. There doesn't seem to be any disagreement there. No, yeah. no. no. It's a solid stick. Uh, I think some of my favorite is uh, Cuban Partagas, I think, mm. if I had to put a Partagas on the list. Mm-hmm. Um, number two is a Romo and Alione, specially selected. That's a no-brainer. Yeah. Again, mm-hmm. fantastic. We talked about that. one right now. Uh, <laughs> I put Monte Cristo number two. Now, I, I suppose you could supplement here. But you can go different ways You with could that. go different ways with that. <sighs> I'm putting, I've um, go ahead, Tim. actually had a Monte Cristo number two, so I'd supplement something else, but only because uh, well, I'm ignorant on it. So, I love Monte, the Monte Cristo cigars in general. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I four, love the number twos, right? The, number the Monte four, four is, is my, right. is my jam. The I love that. I agree. I agree. The Monte Four, if I was to buy a box, Monte Because everybody, so I think four. everyone has that uh, allure to number two because it's so well known amongst even people that are non Cuban smokers. They, yeah. Number two, you know, they even see in the Dominican. I think side. Uh, the number two is some easily identifiable flavors. Right, that's it's exactly. There's that earth and a lot of cedar. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, it's kind of an easy, easy smoke, the mm-hmm. torpedo. I don't, I don't know. I uh, tend to go with that one because it, I guess I'm playing into a little bit of the hype there mm-hmm. with the number two. But keep in mind uh, the granted Mundo. Another if you had one. to swap something out for the, you know, right. for the money, go, exactly. Yeah, Grand Mundo is fantastic. Grand Mundo is fantastic. Yep. So I would, you know, you can put that on your list too. I had a Boulevard Bellicoso Finos. Uh, that to mm-hmm. me seems to be one of my more favorite Boulevard smokes. Uh, what about you? What, what's kind of striking your fancy with? With Bolivars, the Bellicoso Fino is your favorite. Uh, the p- the, so p- the p- it's p- not my. It, okay, that's a great yeah, one too. Yeah. I I would say the uh, gold medal. I just traded. Really? Uh, yeah. Props to Zed Man. I don't know. If Zed, oh, there's Zed Man. He's in the chat He's room the now. Chat, yep. Yeah, we just did a trade, and uh, one of those in the trade was a Bolivar gold medal for me because mm-hmm. uh, I had never had one before. They mm-hmm. they're awesome. Mm-hmm. They're expensive, and they come in right. boxes of ten. But right. they are my favorite Boulevard. But if I was probably to buy a box, I would go with the Bellico Sofino. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 that's a safe bet. Uh, and I had the Hoyo de Monterey, uh, Hoyo de Monterey de Dieu. They right? do, yeah, they do. Absolutely. I, I mean, I haven't sampled a lot of the Hoyo de Monterey line, mm-hmm. but I tell you, that de I have, is, That's the best by far. Is oh, it? Yeah. Okay, so Mark yeah. Jr.'s done some line sampling right. there. Oh yeah, yeah. And mine, I, I just love the Esplendido by, I'm not a big Cohiba. But now, see, I didn't I put a, I toured, so I was talking to one of my friends yesterday. We had the neighborhood mm-hmm. block party, and uh, which ends up being a portion of the block party is dedicated to, like, the herf. That's, like, a big thing at the neighborhood block party. Everyone gets together mm-hmm. and smokes cigars. Um, guy in the neighborhood broke out a bottle of you know, Glenlivet 18 mm-hmm. here, and we were all sitting around smoking cigars, and I bring my big box of cigars. I live in the wrong fucking neighborhood. Yeah. We do every, <laughs> you're on the fucking train. Oh, 45 <laughs> bags in my neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, so we Sorry, all, we, ahead, we, have a, we have a common area in the neighborhood, and I bring a gigantic box of uh, my 30 carrying box of cigars. I hand them out to everyone. And yeah, all the um, white <laughs> okay. One of the guys is in the service, and uh, he, he buys a lot of Cubans when he's uh, serving uh, overseas. And uh, we got talking about Cohiba Magicos. And he's like, those yes. are the best ones. He's like, they're expensive, I know. He's like, but I, every time I go into a store and I have the opportunity, I always buy some. He also said the Genios, which it's is good. the larger size, right. 
I said, I've never had one of those. So he actually went back to his house when he got the scotch. He brought me one and we traded. Mm. So I have a genius now uh, to smoke. Mm. I've smoked one. They are pretty yeah. awesome. The, the, I have to mm. admit. The magicals awesome. are magical. Oh, they're, they're yeah. just, what yeah. age? But they're so expensive, though. The mm -hmm. Cohiba, I mean, that's why I didn't Cohibas put Cohibas in general. Cohibas well, in general. I'm not a huge I Cohiba fan. I mean, it depends. And that's the, the most Siglo counterfeit. This series yeah. is kind of okay. And it is the most counterfeited, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it is by far. Yeah. El Rey de Mundo, the Petit Coronas, I, I, you know, a real cheap stick, but it delivers a lot of flavor. I could say something going back to the Monte Cristo, too. If you like Monte Cristo 2s, you should try a Diplomaticos number two. Really? Yeah. yeah. They're really, really good, and they don't suffer from the construction issues quite as bad as the yeah. Monte Cristos Yeah, Monte Cristos do. number two tend to be tough sometimes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Same with the Lusitanias. The Partagas? Oh, yeah. When they're great, they're, when they're, oh, they're oh, unbelievable. They're really when they're good. Not, they're when, they're yeah. Oh, when that's spot on, but they are so aggravating. I, that's why I don't even bother with them anymore. One yeah. I would add to this list, Paul, is the Romeo and Julieta short Churchill. Yeah, those mm -hmm. are good, Tim. And I, I tell you what, that's a fantastic yeah. recommendation because that's when you could smoke every morning with mm -hmm. coffee. Be happy. And not only that, but I think it's good for the newbie. Yeah, uh, as yeah. well as somebody that's more seasoned too. Uh, yeah, for the seasoned smoker, uh, the the uh, Romeo Juliet, the Casador. Yep, dude, those are good too. Oh right? man, oh, we can go on so, and on. So <laughs> I have some in mind that that yeah, nobody's so, mentioned so well, far. What right? if you had to put together a top five list? A top five, top five. Okay, uh, so far the Ramon Aliones, mm -hmm. you mentioned it, so I won't go too much into that one. Juan Lopez Selection on number two. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, they're yes. they're relatively yes. inexpensive, but they are unbelievable smokes. Very, very, very good mm -hmm. smokes. Tons of flavor, um, and I've never been disappointed by one. San Cristobal de Habana Los Puntos. Oh, mm -hmm. I didn't put those on the list. Those ridiculously, are ridiculously, really ridiculously yeah. awesome. Yep. Yeah, um, pretty reasonably priced too. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, the Punch Punch, mm -hmm. I love a lot. And if I was to go back to a Cohiba, yeah, what would your pick be? I'm curious. Boost, though. Yeah. What, I, what the age? <laughs> yeah. What about those uh, so Porlorangas? Uh, well, yeah, that too. Yeah, the Porloranga like, Petit Corona is... I really enjoyed that cigar. I thought it was great. Really, really great. And, and they age, like, retardedly well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, five years on these things, and, and you, you know... I said this while we were, while we were off, that, like, I'd buy... They come in cabs of 50, and I would buy a, a cab of 50, and literally do everything in my power to forget about them for yeah. three or four years. And that's what happened. That the 2003, the Robusto. Oh, my God. It, it, that, that Cohiba, that, 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 that is, it, it is truly is. But Cohiba is such a oh, known brand which uh, people understand. It's, like they you are say, expensive. That's, that, the, that, only that's the only thing. thing. They're over, they're, I mean, it doesn't matter if it's Dominican or Cuban. They're overpriced. So how did everyone's uh, Ramon Yi, Ramon Familia Finish uh, off. Well, and this is the same. Not mine. I, 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 I got to the well. same point. I think uh, as yeah, you. Yeah, mine made it to here. Yeah, here we are. We're saying it got a little hot. Look at the size of it. It's a half an inch long. Uh, hello. <sighs> that was good. Uh, yeah, actually. I brought mine down to a half inch. So. One, one Cuban too that a lot of people don't really ever talk about. Actually, I've never heard anyone talk about it that I really like, and they're cheap. Is the Flor de Rafael Gonzalez? Mm -hmm. okay. They make a Lonsdale that are. Very, very good smokes, and they perform well with some age on them. Mm -hmm. uh, Zenman in the chat room is saying Vegas Robeana. Oh, yes. 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 Famosos good call. and yes. Unicos. Yep. Good, good call. Too. Very good call. I, uh, yep. The one Excellent. I really want to try, and somebody, I, I want to say it was on the BOTL, had posted on them. Um, they described them as toasted marshmallow, which caught my attention immediately. Um, and that was the El Rey Del Mundo. Has mm. anybody had those? Yes. I haven't had the Cuban version. I, I have. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I got yeah. the, yes. I got the Petite Coronas. Okay. They're really... I didn't get quite the Toasted Marshmallow. Yeah, he was referring to the Supremes, the uh, mm. the Robustos. The, the Choice, choice, choice Supremes. Supremes. Yeah, yeah. Choice yeah. They are really... I mean, come on, guys. And the I other mean, one. we're going to sit here and talk about yeah. this all day. All right. right. And then the well, other one. Maybe there's a box in my future. That was my whole purpose. It's, a, it's like a softball yeah, it segment. Is. It <laughs> yeah, Lob does a softie on this one. Dude. Yeah, it's like a snowball effect. Look yeah. at... No one's even mentioned the H. Upman. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? There you go. True. Yeah. Magnum, Magnum, Magnum 46 <laughs> and Magnum 50. So yeah. Those are all, both awesome. Yeah. And then on top of it, they come out with these limited editions yeah. all the time, yeah. which are, again, pricey, but <clears throat> really, really good smokes. Like, uh, I know I gave you a couple and you had really crappy luck with them. I had them. really crappy luck. But Romeo and Julieta came out with one in 2007 called the Escudos that was 
spectacular, right? It mm-hmm. was awesome. And then they come out with these regional exclusives. So, I mean, it, come on. So, some people would say we shouldn't buy them because the people that make them are forced to make them and don't love their jobs and hate life. That can go anywhere. <laughs> Look at Burger King. <laughs> Should I not buy Nikes? <laughs> I mean, seriously. Yeah. And no one brought up a counter. So uh, Frank Herrera is a, a lawyer. And he does yeah. cigar stuff. He said that no one challenged him. Mm-hmm. No one. Now everyone shook their head yes. No one challenged him on this, on this mm-hmm. point. And it's a point we brought up before, right? Mm-hmm. Stuff we buy here in the U.S. is made all over the world. You, you can say So you same. can't base your purchasing I know. I want to know if that guy buys Nike cleats for his kids. Yeah. I want to know if he you buys buy Reebok so- jerseys mm-hmm. for his kids. Mm-hmm. You know, like... I mean, I don't, I'm sure you got Air Jordans. I, that, I, I mean, I'm, not a, poli- yeah, I know. I'm not a political science, like, major or anything, right? But, so... I am. I mean, <laughs> the, the people in China... Everybody's, everybody's entitled to their opinion. Absolutely. Oh, oh, absolutely. It doesn't bother absolutely. me when somebody says something like that and nobody counters it. What's there right. needs to be a counterpoint. Absolutely. Yeah, but I mean, right. so when stuff is made in China is, uh, how are those working conditions well, compared to the people in let's Cuba? Let's put it this that, way. Is, what mean, is the know. largest imported item in the United States? Uh, oil? Nope. So Mr. Frank, maybe, maybe, the, maybe he can answer that. It's clothes. Mm. So there you go. So you're telling me someone that's living in, you know, wherever, you, whatever, India, Pakistan, whatever. So your clothes, one, everyone's got to wear clothes. Every, everyone Not everyone to, smokes, but everyone wears clothes. Every, and, do you know where the Diplomatico <laughs> rum we had all drank before was made? Nicaragua, right? Venezuela. Venezuela, Venezuela yeah. right. So yeah, people there about love their lives, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone so, spit it out. Yeah. Spit it out now. <laughs> Get a life. <laughs> you know what it is? <laughs> It is. I mean, I I, so anyway. I feel for everybody, but it is what it is. You know what I mean? Yeah. No one. No one wants anybody to suffer. No. Dude. Look at diamonds. <laughs> yeah. Does we his wife have diamond yeah, rings yeah. on her hands? It would go on forever. No. I, I mean, Whatever. to speak to the construction too. I mean, certainly. I'm in a testament that you can find construction problems in any blend. <laughs> Not just Cuban cigars. I mean, there are construction problems all over the all now, over the map. I've said this many times, or maybe not many, but at least a few times on this show. I hold back a little bit on buying Cuban cigars, even though I love them and I will buy them from time to time, simply because there's two reasons, right? I have to buy a box. Yeah. And second of all, Sometimes you buy a box of 25 and only 18 of them smoke. Right. Right. And the price and, pushes up. And the price per stick goes way up. Right. And and so there is like a drawback to buying them. Right. Mm-hmm. But there's, I, and but, I won't go spend top dollar on I me. Mean, I think that's a good point. Like the remote alley owners are like, I bought it six bucks a piece. Yeah. And to me, yeah. if 18 out of the 25 smoke, I'll take that hit because I enjoyed the crap out of those 18. Mm. And, and I didn't I pay an exorbitant Paul. price. Right. Same with the day deuce. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, even if. You know, only 20 or 21 out of the box smoke, right? It's still well worth it because they're six, six bucks a So whack. we settle for me, me to rock. Yeah, I, I did smoke a 1998 Day Deuce this morning oh. with coffee, and it was. Mm. Mock, you suck. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. The, I, I got have, one left. I have to say, though, smoked that one, one, of the, <laughs> but, one of the redeeming qualities that is almost a double-edged sword is the Cuban tobacco ages really well. Mm-hmm. But they don't age it a lot before they roll it into a cigar mm-hmm. due to the the situation in, right. in Cuba, right? I mean, they want to get the product out uh-huh. and make the, the money that they can make off of it. Um, but I find that when you do get them, if you do age them, I, out of a lot, all the different tobaccos, right, that are used in cigars, Cubans consistently age very, very well. Now, there's a, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of other tobacco that ages really well too, but I think if you had to pick the top three uh, types of tobacco that age really well, Cuban tobacco is going to be in there. Um, which I think is a redeeming quality and also kind of a negative because if you want them to be really, really good, you got to wait, you know. Um, mm-hmm. But I think the secure, serious cigar smoker will do that. Sure. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. <sighs> that man says he was going to work out and <laughs> who the hell does a podcast on Sunday night? <laughs> we do. That's the way That's the way the schedule fell, Zedman. We apologize. So... Ah, work out tomorrow. Do some do some push ups right. while we wait. On your wife's chest. No problem. You <laughs> <laughs> light your cigars. Uh, One, two, two, three. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh boy. Okay, okay. so uh closing thoughts on uh Cuban cigars. Um if if it, it it's all in what you want to do. It's it's you know, there's so much good Honduran, Nicaraguan. 
you know, cigars that are out there. And I can understand where people don't want to, you know, like chase them, like they're saying. Yeah. But if you like them, well, go for them. For me, I want them on my menu. Right. Yeah, well, I, I agree. Well, you know, that's I, I, the way I, I have put them. it. I, is I want them on my menu. Yeah. Hmm. yeah that's what I mean. I, I agree 100%, but one caveat. It, if you're in the U.S., it is risky. It is. No, no Tim's got a good point. No, because the There government. is a risk associated with that. Yeah. And, um, well, Everybody needs to make a personal decision on that, so please do your reading. Right, and just don't you don't buy like five or ten boxes uh, every exactly. two months. You know, if you you're buying a couple, a couple yourself. here, a couple of, yeah, exactly. Just be smart and you gotta pace uh, yourself. Yeah, to each his own. It's everybody's personal decision. So mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, if you want to no judge either way, if you want to try them, trading is definitely the way to go. Mm-hmm. Yes, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. and that lets you kind of sample and trade with somebody that you know. reputable. Yeah, and that way you counterfeits aren't an issue. Mm-hmm. If you're going to buy online, you got to get a site that's vetted. People have mm-hmm. ordered from; they're actually legit, and uh, that can be risky too. So you got to kind of you, I mean, you roll the dice. Even if it's a good site, they still can get confiscated. Everybody's Absolutely. afraid of that. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, yeah. that's that's another thing too, right? Is, mm-hmm. is I don't necessarily want the government knowing because all they care about on. the government only wants one thing. They don't care that Money. you buy yeah taxes. Money, right? That your <laughs> tax evasion, not Cuban cigars, tax evasion. Yeah. Well, I've seen a um, pattern too in, in past years. Um, there seems to be more things getting clipped through customs around Christmas time. Oh yeah, Christmas all day. the time. Um, <clears throat> so. Keep that in yeah, mind. They, there's one site right now because of the the volume that they're doing. Everything's getting pinched, and I've been told not yeah. not to go there. That stinks. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's a great, great site too. So yeah. I think the uh, the suggestion now is probably wait till after Christmas mm-hmm. before you do any ordering. Oh, that's it. Middle of the year. Absolutely. I don't think I can wait that long. Mm-hmm. That's why you always <laughs> gotta buy a lot. Oh, you got <laughs> plenty, Paul. Come on. Oh, that's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do I probably have. Well, if anyone wants to hook up, hook me up with some Cuban cigars, please. Send us an email. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll phone a few, uh, a few Stogie Geese stickers and a towel. Yeah, that's it. And Tim will wash a car. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for listening. Kids, yeah, that's it's it. been a fabulous episode. Um, I do want to say that the also, as a final note, the uh, breast cancer research fundraiser that mm. we did on August 31st, uh, we put up a Padron uh, five pack that you can bid on, and that uh, episode has not yet been released. There's eight hours of audio and video that are being processed, and it was over a holiday weekend, so there's a little bit of a delay there. Um, mm-hmm. Some of the first episodes are starting to hit uh, the airwaves, so to speak, right. and um, the interwebs, the interwebs, the tubes. If uh, so, if you listen to the previous episode or this episode, we're gonna try and get the bid up as high as we can for five ridiculously awesome Padron cigars. Do you want to talk for, about them they're again? all family reserves, aren't they? Family reserve, 44th Maduro, uh, 45th Maduro, 46th Maduro, 40th, 1926 40th, is that Maduro? Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and the uh, 80th, 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 1926 80th anniversary, mm-hmm. uh, double perfecto. Maduro, mm-hmm. which are just, I mean, which are really awesome if you guys have never tried one. Oh so my God. Not the easiest have to, to find, but. Plus, yeah. the money goes to a great car. In your right? lifetime, mm-hmm. you want to smoke every single, at least one of every single one of those cigars if you're really into cigars. I, mean, I have the post drafted. I, I will give some lead time, um, give everybody a chance to email in. Yes. If they want to, you know, want to put a bid in on the blind auction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we're doing a blind auction. You email stogeeks at gmail.com with your bid. And uh, the winner will receive uh, the five pack and then can either show proof that they've donated that amount to uh, uh, breast cancer research and or give us the money. and We will donate it on your behalf. So mm. totally up to you. You know what? I'm just going to publish that post right now, even though the episode's not out. That way it's there. Um, sure. I'm just going to set the date out a couple weeks. So it gives I, you know, I just saw a bunch of stuff. Uh, get, it, we may actually have uh, the audio. Um, while we were recording, I saw a bunch of stuff uh, getting uploaded. So I think the uh, the audio engineer is uh, getting caught up, Tim. So, so if I put it out on the September twenty second, is that reasonable? That's yeah. Two week away. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, that's perfect. Fair All right. Thanks everyone for listening, and we'll see everyone on the next episode of the Stogie Geeks. Mm-hmm.